It is 5.32 and we are going to open this Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. So the first item on our agenda is approval of minutes for September 15th, 2021. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion that uh, the minutes be approved. Second. All those in favor of approving the September minutes, say aye. 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 Same sign, sign opposed. Okay, moving on. Public hearing, uh, case number RZ2021-016, applicant Bosky Clark LLC is requesting a rezone of property located at 110 Clark Lane, parcel R63366 of City Edition, Block 85, Lot 1 and 2A, PTSOF of the City of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas, uh, R3 multifamily to R2.5 integrated housing district. And I'm sorry, Steve, before you go on, I forgot to announce that an item has been pulled from the agenda. It is case number PD2021-003004 and 005. That is the um, rezone of the property at uh, 817 West Washington, 855 and 866. Six, five West Washington. Those items have been pulled. So if any of you are here for that to talk, I, I just did not want to waste your time. So just, uh, okay. Um, moving on back to case uh, RZ2021-016. Steve. Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair, and Commissioners. Uh, as you recall, we recently introduced a new zoning of R2.5 and we, we went through uh, what that new zoning allows and uh, the authorities granted to the PNZ and, and city council through that new zoning. And uh, Mr. Taylor Canute is the first one out of the box to make application for the R2.5. And so he's got a, a project over uh, at the uh, address specified. Uh, the future land use for this property is uh, multifamily. Um, but he is requesting to rezone to R2.5 uh, for a townhome project. Uh, his particular site plan does not necessarily line up exactly with the, uh, the requirements of the R2.5 zoning, but if you will look at uh, section C12, I believe, in your packet, I have it highlighted for you on page, uh, let's see here, it looks like page eight. Um, this R2.5 zoning is similar uh, to a uh, planned development, uh, but a little less formal uh, in the fact that deviations from the, the standards that are required by the R2.5 can be reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission and with a favorable recommendation approved by City Council um, after review of a site plan, which includes the renderings with elevations, a finished schedule, and architectural designs that meet the existing structures of the area of integration. So you just want to make you aware that you have that authority uh, under this particular zoning. Uh, the Canutes have put together a very uh, comprehensive application and they're, as you can see from uh, your packet, and I'm moving now to page 10, uh, you have the application that they have submitted and then they begin uh, with their submittals by providing uh, renderings of the elevations. And so if we scroll through, uh, we have each of their renderings um, on page, looks like 15, we're going to have a uh, site plan. And I believe what they're proposing here are 22 foot wide lots. Uh, the ordinance requires 30 foot width lots. Uh, so this is one of the deviations that PNZ could could uh, certainly consider and and approve if if so desired. Repeat that again. How, what's the difference? Uh, Twenty-two foot is what they're proposing. Uh, the ordinance generally requires thirty by one hundred, thirty feet wide, one hundred foot uh, okay. depth for a townhome development. So they're eight feet shy. Eight feet shy. Okay. Um, we also have the floor plans that they have submitted for uh, first and second floor. Uh, this is a uh, unique property uh, somewhat to our city and with the location, it sounds like a, a really neat concept with a roof, rooftop um, area. Uh, and I understand that it will have a view to the downtown area from these rooftops. We do have one letter of opposition, uh, which is included in your packet on page 19. And then I have provided copies of the uh, R2.5 zoning ordinance that was presented before city council. 
uh, and then also the R.3. Uh, please note in this, we have not, um, this is what was presented to council, but there were some amendments made on the floor. And so the setback requirements for R2.5 uh, for a townhome on the front and rear is now 15 feet instead of what is specified in this document. So we need to get that corrected in these documents and have them sent for a codification. So uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay, does everybody have questions for Steve? Yeah, I, I assume he's going, he requested 2.5 because of the setback and the uh, width, lot width settings as opposed to R3. Um, well, I wouldn't want to speak for Mr. Canute, but I believe um, okay. uh, I'll, what I'll I can, I'll what I can say to that, that uh, Mr. DeLauder, uh, Commissioner DeLauder, is that uh, this is a, a simpler process than going forward with a PD. And okay. again, it, it can okay. uh, provide a little bit of a, a quicker uh, resolution because you have the power and the authority to accept this tonight and then make a recommendation to council if you so desire. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and open a public hearing. Um, Mr. Canoe, would, would, would you care to speak? Sure. And then we'll open it up to the public. Um, would you like me to address your that's, question right that's now? That's one of the things that I, I was questioning because it's already R3, and I don't see you uh, proposing any mixed use. They're all townhomes. That's all multifamily, and it's already zoned. R3, and I'm just assuming that uh, you picked R2.5 because of the different setback and the different lot widths requirements. Is that true? Yes, and, and Steve okay. was pretty pretty accurate in saying that it going to R2.5, and I know it's it's a brand new zoning um, okay. for the city. Well, we, the reason I ask is because the letter of opposition is uh, uh, to this is that they wish the property to remain R3, and. Uh, other than the setback and a lot with requirements, I would assume that you can build a townhome settlement in, in R3 zoning. Madam Chair, if I may jump yes, in please. with a little clarification on that. You may recall from the previous presentation uh, when we went over the R2.5, there was also a sister document that was the R.3. And when we created this R2.5 zoning, we also create a delineation between a townhome property, which is generally individually platted and individually sold, which is what the Canutes are proposing, whereas an R3 is generally a higher density property under a single management on a single property. I, 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 okay. And Rental so, as opposed to so the, the so the R2.5 aligns more closely with, yeah. with so, their so what their proposing to well, be but townhomes town 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 are multifamily too, so uh, and. Uh, other people have developed townhomes in R3 zoning. That is correct. But with so, this, this uh, recent change, we are now, uh, townhomes will now be considered the R2.5 and multifamily okay. will be R2.5. Okay. And, and R2. I'll, R2. I'll have to get used the, to the new. Uh, the difference yes, is the platting. It, that, that with the R3, yes, it's general. one large plat. All, all units on one large. With the 2.5, each unit has its own plat. Correct. Yes, and yeah. our okay. intent okay. is to okay. title each lot and yeah. 14 units, okay. sell 14 individual units. Okay. So. okay, thank you. Do you have any anything you need to, you wish to add? Uh, no, I would just like to speak on behalf of our development. I think uh, the product that we're proposing to build here, um, it's a little different than I think uh, than exists currently in Stephenville and with its proximity to the downtown, similar to our other town-owned development. Our intention is to try to connect as many rooftops as possible to the downtown. We're, you know, just a couple hundred yards from the square pretty much, and we would love to see, you know, curb and gutter sidewalks similar to what we did over there, connect it to the bridge, connect to the, the Bosque River Trail, have access to walk downtown. So um, what we're trying to build is a, a really solid product with some really modern looking architecture. and. Our intent is to sell them to be owner occupied. Um, I'm, like always, I'm sure there'll be a couple of folks that want to buy them as investment properties, but um, in terms of curb appeal and everything like that, I think the proximity to the downtown would be really desirable for <coughs> owner occupied purchasers. So, any questions for Mr. Canoe? You mentioned the Bosque River Trail, and my 
knowing several people who are who have been involved in that project, will this rezoning affect that in any way, or or uh, will it affect access to the trail or the expansion of the trail? Well, if I understand it correctly, where our prop where the property line is, <coughs> the, the sidewalk there is a sidewalk on the bridge that goes over the Washington Bridge that goes over the Bo uh, Bosque River. We should be able to, if the property lines line up, or, and this is all obviously something that can be figured out down the road once engineering is submitted, we would, it would be our intention to connect our development via sidewalk to that bridge, which then extends across the river, and you can have access over by the laundromat to the river trail. To, so. to connect into it, or, or, yes. or ha so that tenants can Or just be it. able to have a continuous sidewalk that leads to it, and then you can go down to the trail. He's so. on the other side okay. of the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the other other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Canute. Thank you. Um, we will now open the open the public hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of this rezone? And but anybody who wishes to speak against this rezone? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, we need a motion so uh, that we would can Would you uh, raise the issue of the opposition letter because you oh, asked well, it, for it, opposition? in the public hearing, right. Steve, and we do Steve have mentioned a letter of opposition. Steve mentioned that there was a letter in opposition. The uh, person by the name of Reed Habarish indicated that they were opposed to the rezone. They wished it to remain R3, but they did not state any reason okay. for the record. All right, closing the public hearing, may we have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to be approved. That RZ 2021 016 uh, uh, be submitted to the City Council with our recommendation for approval. Okay. I'll second. I'm going to give it to Justin. Just under the gun. <laughs> okay. Any, any discussion? I think these look great. Yeah. These look yeah. fantastic. I think so. I, I love the looks of them. I think it's a great addition. Um, I, I see it as a win win. I, I don't. I'm not sure why this person wants it to remain R3. I, I see this as um, an upgrade to R3. So I, I'm in agreement with you. I, 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 I kind of wonder if they didn't realize that, that the R3 yeah. was the apartment. Yeah. And so, so I, I think the fact that these are parceled out and can be each be owned by an individual, I think that that might be more settling to somebody who's having something like this move into their neighborhood. Um, yeah. So I, I, I agree. I think they look great. All right, are we ready to vote? All those in favor of recommending to council approval of the rezone request say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that will move forward to council with our recommendation for approval. And next up on the agenda is case number PD 20201. Should we make another announcement? Yes. I know we have some newcomers in the audience. Just to make you aware, I don't know if you're here for the case on um, the rezone on West Washington, the properties at uh, 817, 855, and 865 West Washington. No? Okay. You're good then. Um, okay. You bet. I just didn't want to waste your time. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we're up to case number PD 2021-002, applicant Reese Flanagan of MMA LLC representing Troy Kunkel of Cowtown, uh, I'm sorry, Cowtown Properties is requesting a rezone of property located at 525 West Collins, parcel R33237 of Shepherd and Collins, block six, lots one and two, and A0032 Blair John of the city of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas, from industrial to planned development. Steve. Uh, yes, ma'am. The the uh, Mr. Kunkel, I believe, is here with us tonight, and uh, I don't think he was able to make it. Oh, he wasn't able to make it. Okay. Yeah, I think it was personal. Came out, gotcha. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I believe we have. Um, well, on August 15, 2021, the uh, commission received and reviewed the conceptual plan uh, for this project, and you might recall that they are proposing 37 <coughs> units on 2.65 acres which is within the 14 units per acre uh, density uh, for a townhome project. Uh, this is a PD request, so uh, it came in prior to our R2.5 zoning, and so uh, they're going through the PD channel uh, on this instead of, uh, I'm assuming on maybe future submittals, you might want to look at the 2.5, uh, but this is a PD submittal, and so 
They do have 13.96 uh, units per acre, 68 parking spaces, which is uh, more uh, two spaces more than what is generally required for a uh, development of this type. Uh, they are requesting approval of the plan development, and I would just like to call attention to the commission to sections 8E and 8J, uh, which outline the conditions to approve a PD. Um, the applicant has a very, um, very nice submittal um, as far as the information that they have provided for this particular PD. And if we scroll down to uh, in your packet on page 40, you'll see that the uh, application has been submitted. And then they also provide renderings of the structure. Um, I believe uh, on this particular unit, they are having, they, these have a height of 38 feet, uh, which is uh, three feet above the general maximum of 35 feet. And so that's something that the commission might want to make note of. And then also they uh, provide a uh, somewhat of a schematic showing that the uh, what the parking will look like. And again, uh, generally speaking, this would exceed the parking requirement by two two spaces. Uh, they do have a rendering of the floor plans for your review. Um, a, another elevation front and rear side as well. Um, and then uh, they provide a, a schematic of the the site plan itself. Uh, showing the density and the egress, uh, ingress and egress to and from the property, of course. Uh, and then also we provided in your document the ordinance that relates to plan developments. Uh, and again, ma'am, I, I believe the one exception here uh, would be the height. And then there's also a lot width um, issue that would generally be uh, something that we, we might want to look at uh, pretty closely, but with this PD, I believe it's a 22 foot wide uh, lot that they're looking at. Uh, and so with that, ma'am, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, I have a question. You you were saying that this had more parking spaces than required? Uh, yes, ma'am. But it be, says that there are 37 units proposed? 37. So that would be 74 required spaces, correct? Or is my math wrong? Well, let's see, that, that makes sense. Um, let me scroll back. I may have calculated that incorrectly. And then you have 68 listed. It's showing 86 residential parking, 37 guests, total 123. Oh, you might have transposed the numbers. Maybe it's 86 instead of I'm 68. Yes, I bet that's what it is. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good catch and, and okay. I, correction. Just, just wanted to make sure that. So yeah. it will actually have 86 spaces, is that? Yeah, look on, let's look on their maps. Because parking is a big deal in a college town. And total spaces are 123. 123 total. Where are you guys looking? Where are um, they? Okay. On the side plan. Two car garage for each, each townhouse. I believe we have representation here from the developer as well. And the, so two car garage and then also the guest parking. Guest parking. Guest parking. Yeah. So it's a total of 123. So it's 86 for resident, 37 for guest. So ample. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I stand corrected. Thank I'm you for catching one car in this other, other questions for Steve? Is the, is the, you said the height, 35 feet? Two cars. Generally the two height two 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 is 35 feet. feet. And his <laughs> exceeded, is that with the main ridge or the dormer? That's the dormer. Is a 38, okay. I believe it's 38. Point. So that wouldn't be no problem to get rid of a dormer and you keep your height. Well, we, we have a five story fire engine in this town now, so I think we're covered. Okay, let's let's go ahead and open the public hearing. And um, you, you, I'm sorry, your name? Reese. Reese, Reese, Reese Flanagan. Reese Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan, uh, if you, you could go ahead and answer some of these questions and, and if you have anything to offer about this. Sure. So, parking. Correct. Y'all were right about that. As far as the height, I'm not sure exactly how easy it would be to remove that. Uh, we're hopeful we can keep that additional three feet. This is something that uh, over the last month we've sat down with the fire marshal, building official, and it kind of shown this site plan and these elevations to a lot of people in the city, and there's not been a huge concern from a fire standpoint. Um, so we're hopeful we can keep that additional three feet, but it's something we could consider if, if that was a big issue. Is the dormer, does the dormer add an additional bedroom or, or additional living space, I should say? I 
I would like to think it's just an additional study area, but I, I would have to confirm. I can get with the architect and, and figure that out. Madam Chair, if I may remind the board, with the PD, uh, you are able to make variations um, to allow a 38-foot high. Right, right. So, we're, we're uh, totally within our power to allow that to yes, happen. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, um, do you have anything to add? Any general information? No. Um, just from a civil engineering standpoint, we've had a bunch of conversations trying to do due diligence with the city. So uh, we're certainly making an effort to make sure we're moving in a good path. So I can answer any questions, any other questions you may have. But, uh, but that's it. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Flanagan? Is there going to be any soundproofing to uh, keep out the railroad noise? I would think there will be something. I can, I can certainly ask the question to the developer and the architect about what they plan to do yeah. with that. We, we, we do not have a no whistle ordinance in Stephenville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's generally four trains a day. Sure. And I live a few blocks from the railroad track and I hear it at my house. Sure. So <laughs> I, I would be concerned for the, for the people living in this. No, thank you. But I, mean, I, but, I mean, but it's not like we don't have other units. Uh, mm -hmm. Off of Lily, and we have yeah. Oh, yeah. we right. have some units there that but, are. But I appreciate it. I mean, I'll, I'll relay that, and hopefully that's something they'll. Just a question. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of this rezone request? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against it? Although I okay, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, can I get a motion? I move that we recommend to council approval of PD 2021-002 with possible uh, height restrictions. So your your motion is that there are height restrictions? Possible. I think I through the discussion. I'm a, you you I'm have to go one way or another with a motion. You need to say. All right, as as proposed. As proposed. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I mean, it's three feet. And I don't. If see the fire trucks can reach it, it, who cares? I can't okay. see where you can take it off either, because he's got a nine foot first floor, two ten foot on the other. So maximum you can pull down is two feet, and you're going to have to have that for HVAC and everything else. Yeah. So I don't. Other than what's up in the attic, I don't understand the three feet. So. That's why I was just kind of concerned, but yeah, you I know why that's there they, for at 35 They look to be the feet. same, except that a couple of them have a dormer right on, on top. That's why I was asking about additional living space. It almost looks decorative, and I don't know if you look at the side view, though, it's the dormers. Dormers seem lower. I, I don't. I don't know. But all I know is it's three feet. Are we going to quibble about feet three feet if the fire trucks can reach I'm not, it? I'm not. I'm just going to get clarification on why it is yeah. 35, if I could. It's that much more shadow on the little house across the street. I don't okay. have That's a good argument. history on why 35 okay. was chosen other than uh, possibly if, uh, as chosen as long ago. mentioned earlier a fire safety concern. Um, yeah. But again, we this have adequate equipment now not for any, yeah. any additional. Although, more. if you look at page, I guess it's 30. Uh, in I, I in reference know. to my more shadow, it looks like the, the roof line generally is the, yeah, the, the, the highest top. roof line, it, it really looks the same. Yeah, I know. If you, so I don't think that dormer is is actually that is actually adding more height right. per se. No, it's not. Yeah, not according to this. And, and if you yeah, and if you look at the side view, which is uh, right. maybe mm -hmm. thirty two. Right, yeah. it looks like it's so the that's peak. That's, that's the height. The peak, yeah. the peak of the yeah. roof is what. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with three feet personally. I'm I'm good with three feet. Just an aesthetic still. Um, any other issues people have? And, and we're t I, I was, uh, with my concern, I had some concern about Ray Street and the access, the entrance onto race uh, or onto Frost from race, um, especially of a morning and of an afternoon, you know, at, at starting with after school pickup okay. uh, through, uh, but I'm told that, that there will be some uh, yes, ma'am, that's correct. Um, fair question uh, for us. I mean, we are making a zoning request change, so it's a fair question. Uh, yeah. But I can assure you that once this gets through this stage and city council approval, uh, we will then go through the, the review process, which they have already begun. 
Um, and then we will, at that point, uh, during the review process, if a TIA is deemed necessary by their engineer, uh, then that will be a requirement of the approval. So that will be addressed uh, either through an engineering assessment where they deem that it's not necessary with their engineering stamp um, saying so, mm -hmm. or they will require a TIA. Can we, can we as a, as a board request that that be done? If you should, uh, make a motion for an amendment Amend. to his uh, motion. And it be in the form of a traffic study, which you just kind of. But I, I mean, I think what he's saying is it'll happen. It's part of the process. It's part of the, it's it's part of the process, process already. Correct. Part of the review process. Okay. So it's, un, un, it's it redundant. It's going to happen. And they'll be back right. again multiple times before this is over. Okay. Uh, that answered my concerns. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Other mm -hmm. concerns? Are we ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor of recommending to council approval of this rezone request, say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, then this item will go forth to council uh, for their, well, with our recommendation that they approve it. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we are skipping over item number four, moving on to item number five, which is case number RZ2021-017. Applicants Alan Vandergriff, Chad Vandergriff, and Coriana Allant are requesting a rezone of property located at uh, 683 West Tarleton, parcel R29685 of Park Place and City Edition, Plot 3 and 69, lots 1B, 2B, 4B, 12 of the City of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas, B2, Retail and Commercial Business to R3 Multifamily. So thankful you read those in there. <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord. Steve. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> So the, uh, the applicant um, is requesting that we uh, consider R1 zoning for this. It's uh, currently uh, B2 with future being R1 and they're, they're asking that we uh, allow uh, R1 uh, zoning for this particular parcel. It's been- R3. Oh no. Uh, it says R3. Is it R3? R3. 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 Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. It, they are requesting R3. Um, should have known that I had a very lengthy discussion with them about the op their options. Um, it's it's originally constructed as R1, and that's or a single family residence, and that's where I was jumping ahead. So thank you for the correction. Uh, so it's been operated as a salon in a B2 district, even though it's uh, originally constructed as a single family residence. Um, in your packet, I have included the. R3 zoning, uh, which again, uh, it's a little different than what we've seen in the past because we have taken the R, uh, the townhome uh, type uh, structures out of R3. Otherwise, the R3 ordinance remains uh, the same as it has been in the past. So setback requirements and things of that nature are the same. Um, have a copy of their application that they submitted. And um, I think this is, uh, Certainly something I can share, but the request is based upon uh, the fact that they inherited the property and they just simply don't want to continue the operation of the business. So uh, with that, ma'am, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Why are they going for R3 as opposed to R1? I guess it's currently R3 all around there. Yes, correct. So, so that's even regardless, okay. So they're just looking to fit in the, the neighboring. The future use map is R1. R1, right. but it's showing on the recommendation that it's multifamily. Currently, that area around. Well, it's currently. Well, it, it said the comprehensive plan for future land use designates it as a multifamily. Mm, where are you looking? Mm, right underneath the recommendation. Future land use designates, yeah, so that's incorrect, right? Mm -hmm. Future land use designates this property to as be a single, single family. family. Uh, yes. Yeah, should okay. Be, should be single family. Good. Good uh, catch, so right. single family future, uh, but to your point, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. the surrounding properties are, are R3. Currently R3. Uh, currently R3. Okay. And so uh, they're just looking to fit in with the character. Trying to fit in with the neighborhood. Okay. And, and also, I believe well, uh, they, they possibly inherited the property to the north as well and so they would be considering uh, bringing something back with that in the near future yeah. okay do you have a question Mary uh, well yeah um, you said to keep in keeping with the use of the but I can tell you all of those along the, that block saving except for the property right next door are 
single family homes. The one, the property right next door is, is a set of duplexes. So even those are uh, technically they're single family. So uh, especially given that the future use is for single family, um, I, I would be hesitant to, to approve the R3 because similar to, uh, to uh, an, another case we had before us, um, a, a blanket R3 approval always right. makes me nervous when you're when you're bringing in an R3. I think I think we need to hold this discussion for after we've done after we've done the public hearing oh, and, okay. and once we're in discussion. Okay. Um, so I'm right sure now we're just asking sense. questions Got you. of Steve, but yeah, okay. good point. But let's just put a pin in that. Um, any other questions <clears throat> for Steve? Okay, then let's go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, it looks like the applicants are, are the applicants here. No. Okay, then we will go ahead and open a public hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of this rezone request? Anybody opposed? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Let's have a motion and then we can discuss. Mm -hmm. I recommend council approval of our uh, denial of RZ 2021-017. I'll second. Okay. Is this for the same reasons as, as what Mary? Well, future land use is showing a single family, and it being that close to downtown, it probably needs to remain single family. The entire neighborhood single family. And I know that everything around it is R3, but it's zoned from that so house much. back toward downtown to look like it's going to be R1. Eventually. Eventually. This would be spot zoning, though, if we, if we I yes. mean, well, really, I think, I think it was spot zoned when it was changed mm -hmm. to the commercial because this was a, yeah. this was a house. So if we're going to change it, it was a commercial change property. it back to where its future use is going to be, rather than mm -hmm. well, that, that way we get the ball moving in the other yeah. direction. Yeah. Could could we uh, could we recommend to council Steve R one? Yes. Yeah, and there was is that allowable? If this motion passes, could we come in with a second motion? R1. R1 zone. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to get these people stuck. They need to sell the house. They, they need the money from the sale. Can so we, if we, can if we, we amend, deny this, you well, know. Can we know amend we this motion to, to deny the R3 mm -hmm. but recommend R1? We would probably have to visit with the property yeah, owner to do the, that. Correct. Without the okay. applicant here to testify, mm -hmm. I, I would be reluctant to change the I, zoning. Yeah. Request, I think so the think best action would be to turn it down and then let them come back with an R1. But the, yeah, I, I know that the from their application, I know they're strapped, strapped for money. They're, yeah. That's so so they need to sell this house quickly. So that means it's months delayed. If we don't act on this now then they don't get to come back till next month, so they don't get to put this house on the market. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. if, the if reality they, on the ground is for these people, this is going to have a big financial well, impact. Well, this is a question for Steve, but um, if they came back and here. filed it as an R1, would they still have to come before us to do that since it's a future use? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, keep in mind that the uh, city council can, can basically hear the case and make it and make them, but, mm -hmm. okay. so perhaps what we can do is follow up with the applicant maybe that's what see that's, if they can yeah. be present at the city council I just don't, meeting and, and then, then they can go through the council and do it there and allow the council that would be the best mm -hmm. action maybe an, an yeah. alternate decision. based on this application it just seems to me that they don't care they just want to sell the property and they need the property zoned correctly to sell it right so that's my goal is, is let them do what they need to do um, so if we deny this, then it can go to council. You can talk to the property owner, see if they're willing to swap it for an R1, and then council can, can deal with that level. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That works for me. What, what do you guys think? And, uh, as long as one of us uh, has a dissenting vote, it will make it easier for the council. They'll have more leeway to decide, uh, as opposed to having to have a supermajority as well. Okay, they're no longer bound by a supermajority, but but simple still. Simple majority. Um, yeah, it's simple majority. Solve. Yeah, that they they no longer have to do that. So so, however we vote on this, they get to do what they want. Um, okay, so are we ready to vote? So the the motion stands that we recommend denial of this to of this rezone to the council. Okay. 
do we need to do a roll call vote? What do you, that, let's go ahead. Mary, do you recommend to council denial of this? Yes, I recommend denial. Yes. Bruce? I vote yes. Yes. Justin? I'll vote no. Okay. Uh, Cliff? Denial. I'm, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Justin. I'm going to vote no. Vote for denial. You vote yes? No. And you vote no. So that is one, two, three, four yeses and three noes. So council will have to, you know, weigh it. But actually, you know, we have full amounts. So that's two thirds. We can recommend to council denial, correct, Steve? That's correct. Okay. So this will go forth with the recommendation to council that they deny this request. And, and actually, you'll, with the you'll, full body, um, the two thirds mm -hmm. is not required. Okay. Right, right. Because we have everybody here. Okay. All right. Next up, um, uh, number six on our, on our agenda is RZ2021-015 and RP2021-007. Applicants Ontaid LLC and Toby O'Neill are requesting a rezone of the property located at 1083 Frey, parcel R32260 of Kite, second edition, block five, lot one, and 1065 West Frey, parcel R32261 of Kite, uh, second edition, block five, lot two, part of the city of Stephenville, Yarrow County, Texas, from R1, single family residential, to R2.5, integrated housing, with simultaneous replatting. Steve. Yes, ma'am. So um, we've been working with Ontida. I've worked through this process. Ontida? And it's Ontida. Okay, and need, thank you, need sir. The reason behind the, the annunciation there. So uh, in May, uh, we had zoning re requests, uh, rezoning requests from, from R1 to R3, and of course that was denied. And uh, through those discussions, it led to the, uh, the invent of the R2.5. So um, this has been uh, kind of a, a, a great process for us because we've come up with uh, some, some new ideas on how to make development easier here in Stephenville. So even though uh, um, this was the case that maybe resulted in some of those thoughts, um, the applicant was just a little bit late on being the first one on the R2.5 <laughs> zoning. So, uh, but he was a very close second. And so uh, with that, uh, you, what we're having tonight is that um, we, uh, Mr. Burdick, uh, has this property and, and uh, he has a, a potential buyer in mind. And that buyer would like to do a, a townhome development. And what we're wanting tonight is uh, that we consider this property for the rezone to R2.5, which would be a lesser density than if it were an R3 property, which was re uh, denied on a previous case. Um, that would reduce the units per acre to 14 compared to 24 as an R.3 or R3. Um, and also with this case, and as allowed by provision very deep in the zoning code, uh, is that you can um, have a rezoning request and a replat considered simultaneously. So uh, that is the request tonight is that the, uh, typically the ordinance requires that the uh, rezoning request it be acted upon and then the replatting follow, uh, but with the request from the property owner and approval uh, that it can be a sim simultaneous uh, case. So uh, not only do we have the rezoning request before you tonight uh, to the R2.5, uh, we also have a replat. And so Mr. Burdick has provided the current map of what the layout is for this particular block um, but then as we go to the next submittal, uh, this is what the property would look like if the replat is approved. Should be able to expand it like this. Um, and so they are taking the entire block. Uh, this is Mr. Uh, Mr. Burdick and Mr. O'Neill uh, represented both on the plat. And they are taking this, this block and using the two uh, R1 lots they're going to reduce the footprint of those R1 lots and create the third lot for the block. And so it would be a replat of the block uh, into lots R1, uh, 1R through 3R. So it'd be three lots in the block instead of the two gotcha. lots that we have now. Um, <clears throat> the plat application is included in the packet. 
also included the uh, information related to the R2.5 zoning, uh, as I mentioned before, and I think we've kind of talked about that um, several times tonight because I know it's new <coughs> and make sure that we're all comfortable with that because I think it's going to be a very popular zoning uh, category for us moving forward. But I believe Mr. Obviously, Mr. Burke is here tonight if we have any questions, and, and of course, I'd be glad to answer any questions for the commission. Thank you, Steve. Does anybody have questions for Steve? Uh, just clarification all, all three lots, though, will be zoned for the R2.5. Is that correct? Um, great question. The two lots will be R.1. Uh, okay, they're so going the, to remain these uh, lot 1R, the ones and 2R with the homes on them will remain R1. Okay. And the remainder lot will be the, the R2.5. Great okay. question. Thank you. Any other questions for Steve? Mr. Burdick, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Um, last time I was here, we didn't have a contract. But we have a contract now. I really like this buyer. Um, she wants to renovate the mansion retail townhomes in the 2.5 area. She wanted to be here tonight, she's very ill and couldn't make it. And Toby's under the weather too, so no. they're by myself. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I think we did everything that, uh, that the commission asked for. What, what's your plans for the spot, the, the kind of long, narrow space between the two homes? Is, to be is honest, that, I'm not certain. It, okay. You know, it doesn't look like a lot of land yeah. on there, but it really is. It's okay. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly what Miss Casey's plan is, but I, she's been working for months okay. with the engineers and architects to put together a very useful plan for all that space to work together. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Burdick? Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of this uh, rezone and replatting? Anybody who wishes to speak against? All right, we'll close the uh, public hearing. Commissioners? I would move that we approve RZ2021-017. And is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion? I appreciate that uh, Mr. Burdick and Mr. O'Neill listened to uh, not only our comments, but also the comments of the uh, the residents in the area, and it looks like they've they've worked with the buyer and have figured out a, a good plan going forward. I'm I'm confident in this plan. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel like this makes sense um, for the location and the property. I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking it needs to remain a single family. R1. Yep. Yeah. Because it's zoned that, that's the future land use. There's plenty of townhomes going up around. Um, the occupancy in those are going to be going down as more of them come up. And at one point, it's going to burst a bubble, and then we're in a town with a bunch of empty buildings. I would fear building single family houses there just because um, I don't know if they could sell them for enough to make it worth it. Uh, you'd be surprised, especially that close to to the two public schools that are there too but a concern I do have is that little that piece little coming moment. back to Fry becoming a street access well I think with the R2.5 which is what's being requested um, you have the the benefit of these are these are each lot is going to be platted again so so these are these could could be single family. I mean, I mean, uh, they're well, meant to yeah, be. Ours. They're yeah. developed to be uh, single family homes. Could they be rented to college students? Yeah, but so can a single family home. So I, I like this. This is kind of an affordable option. So it, it allows for those families who want to live close to the school to buy a new home, something they don't have to worry about uh, putting a whole lot of money into just so they can live comfortably. I I think it's yeah. a really good option. That's what I agree with Mary in in that. What we lack in Stephenville is affordable housing for, for new buyers, for, for young buyers. Right. And this is a way for them to get in on owning something. Without um, having to buy a rundown place to fix yeah. back up or something yeah. that's been sitting there for yeah. 40, 60 yeah. years. So I, I see it as a win. I, I think it's, it's exactly what we need. Yeah. 
Well, this, this, this was basically why we created our 2.5 is this property. I mean, yeah. that's what led us to, yeah. to this. And uh, so to, to uh, right, not, we, not approve it would, uh, I, I think, be uh, not a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor of recommending to council approval of this rezone request, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay. That will move forward to council with our recommendation for approval. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Burdick. Uh, last item on our agenda is discussion of sign regulations relating to murals, Chapter 154. Yes, ma'am. Um, chapter 154 is actually our zoning ordinance, which requires that any revision comes before the council or the P and Z for consideration so uh, this was actually reviewed by the development services committee uh, at a previous meeting and uh, I guess a little background here is that we had an application for a sign permit and uh, went ahead and included that in the packet uh, this particular uh, mural uh, did not meet the requirements of the sign application and there were two reasons for that um, first of all uh, the ordinance which i have listed here for you it must be a premises sign and if we look at this mural um, the applicant has allowed uh, the persons that are sponsoring the sign to put their logos on the sign so that would make it be considered an off-premise advertisement mm -hmm. um, also uh, in the ordinance it says that uh, in paragraph b uh, maximum 100% of the area of the building elevation on which it is painted so you can cover the whole wall but you can only have 10% of that area uh, reflect words or symbols and so obviously um, we have much more than 10% on mm -hmm. this particular mural. Um, I think if we look at other communities across the city we see or across the state we see that a, a lot of cities are trying to make these signs um, I guess less regulated and, and kind of encouraged in fact one town that we looked at they actually have a program that, that uh, offers uh, incentives for these top signs and so um, we wanted to to give the applicant uh, every opportunity um, and so we shared this with the um, development services committee and, and they reviewed this and they made a, a recommendation um, <clears throat> that uh, basically that we uh, have that here we basically the committee uh, reviewed the sign regulations and basically said uh, that we should uh, consider reducing the uh, or allowing off-premise content but uh, making there be a um, having a maximum amount okay. uh, and then also um, as far as the verbiage on the sign uh, to address that as well and so um, Did they specify maximum amount of off-premise signs, like a percentage or something? I believe we. Um, and I, I read that. I, had I think that it's saying is, is it fifteen percent? It was fifteen percent. Fifty percent for off. Fifteen. Fifteen percent for off-premise. No, okay, there's two questions here. One is the amount allowable for off-premise signs, and the other is how much of the sign itself can be words. It's uh, off-premise, um, which is A1, must be a premises sign. And then uh, the second component of that would be paragraph B, which is the 10% of the mural for words and symbols. Okay, so we are looking to increase B from 10 to 15. Is that the suggestion? I believe that's correct, yes, but, ma'am. Will that really help with, with the mural that's been presented? Because it looks like the majority of the sign is actually the word ERAF. So it seems like that's at least 50%, one. <laughs> doesn't it? The off-premise part is the advertising. Yeah, no, the off-premise. Right, but... Or, there's two portions here, right? There's the off-premise portion, and then there's the amount of verbiage allowed on the sign, period, correct? Is that, is, am I that's, understanding That's it how correctly? I was correct. Right, so one, the, the amount of verbiage on the sign, period, looks to me to be about, I don't know, 50%, like a... I, I would almost, 
80%? 75? 75. Now, 60. The, the amount of off-premise signage, oh, I don't know. what. About a quarter. I, yeah, it's looking right. like 25% to me. Yeah, or maybe 20, 20 to 25. Maybe 20? 20 might be accurate. Yeah. So we have two things to decide, correct, Steve? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, I apologize, but if you can let me try to look at another document. Okay. Um, I have notes from that that I thought I had included in here, so I apologize to the commission for this. Where is this going? Steve, it's in the, the first document was a report from development services, which on the uh, premises sign agreed to eliminate the 10% limitation. Oh, just eliminate it completely. Just take it off altogether in the development services report, which is the first page, which is the first that came with the packet and they agreed to have 15 percent on the premise on the off-premise side 50 percent 15 percent on the off-premise right. and then and when you go into the staff report <laughs> think, yeah. e and Z, that's just predicated on the previous development services report so the 10 percent is not even part of the ordinance uh, yes sir thank you okay. Mr. Bynes. um it is page 114 um page 114. so the development services on uh, committee on August 31st, 2021, uh, voted uh, unanimously and agreed that the 10% limitation relating to words and symbols for mural signs ah, be removed. Gotcha. And that the premise content be limited to 15%. Okay. Um, I had scrolled past that, so thank you, Mr. Bonds, for pointing that, out. I thought I'd. Okay. Like that, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. And, and I feel like that. So, so the com okay. committee did recommend yeah. the removal of that limitation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Well, it so it appears that strip on the bottom is 15%. 15, about 15%. Okay. Do we have any questions for Steve? Do I need to open this to a public hearing? Steve? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Any questions for Steve before we go to a public hearing? Where is this mural going? It is uh, right over here off of Graham Street. Uh, the, uh, I believe the applicant is here, and it's is it quality print? Quality, quality print. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's um, let's go ahead. If the applicant's here, would you like to come up and speak your piece? Um, hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Emmons. Um, here is. I meant to include this. I emailed it, given Ms. Cox and Kill Mr. Killen a um, very big headache over this because I did not even realize I needed a permit for this. Um, but as um, y'all were talking about earlier, this is just something that has kind of like boomed in other towns. It's kind of a, they call it like a postcard look um, and not trying to change or take away from Stephenville's heritage or move into big city living or anything, but just trying to bring more <coughs> tourism in. Um, I don't, if you can go back to the picture, please, sir. Um, the, the A, everything in it is part of ERAF since ERAF is kind of like our hub um, to all the local areas um, because I do have a local print shop. I worked there for 10 years. I bought it six years ago. Um, so customers are family. Um, the T represents the Ben Hogan Museum in Dublin. Um, Mary Yantis, her husband was Dick Yantis. They're the ones that bought the clover signs going in and out of Dublin. Um, they're just, they're a big deal. Um, so just kind of like representing Stephenville, but also all of our small towns that some of us may live in. Um, but just kind of bringing them into one little thing. People drive to Marfa to take a picture in front of, you know, an abandoned building. Um, and although my building's not brand new, it does, um, it's been a lot of things from dentist office to everything else and hopefully it will be a print shop for a hundred more years. But <laughs> um, it's just something that we'd really like to do. Um, when I thought of this idea and saw it in several other towns, I did not realize, which my, one of my best friends, she's the one that's painting the mural. She's also a local artist. Her name's Lauren also. Um, her signature's in the bottom right. Um, I didn't realize how expensive it was. So that's when we came up with the idea of getting it sponsored. Um, and I talked to some of the tourism and stuff like that, but I never heard back from them. So within two hours, I had sold out all the sponsorships and had more than enough to pay for it um, to where that whatever's left over, we would keep for maintenance and touch-ups um, and corrections and edits and everything. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. 
Um, I think it's a great idea. Let's go ahead and open a public <laughs> hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak in favor of uh, this alteration of sign regulations reg relating to murals? You, you wish to speak in favor? Please, sir, come to the mic. Give us your name and your address. I'm Tom Hines, 729 West Tarleton. So not knowing which side of the dais I was going to sit on tonight, I did come prepared. <laughs> And I want to pass out these photographs. The first one is on the back side of Cheerful Heart. And just to let you know, that was done without a permit. But if you look at it, on the left side is Honeybee Street and Yellow Jacket Street. And it's got Cowboy Capital of the World. Um, they're promoting tourism, all right, and Stephenville. The, um, and they do meet. Well, I don't know if they meet the 10%. I'm not, that's not the point of this discussion for me. The next one is on the side of Rexall Drugs, and I'm not sure whether that was done with a permit, but notice that it's almost 100% letters. And then we have the next one, which is the back of this building, which um, in its sense promotes Stephenville because that's what it is. And so um, I think that on item D on the staff report, the second staff report, I would recommend that we, on under 12.3.5 mural sign that D, where, that, where we add or recommend adding, may promote tourism, commerce, and economic development. And for Lauren to go get sponsors to do this, who are merchants downtown for commerce and economic development, I think is a good idea. And I just want to show you that, um, that even Cheerful Heart did have an understanding of why Stephenville is important and they put it on their mural. So I think it's a good option. And um, people driving up and down, um, the street there are going to see who all is involved and and yeah they're paying to get that you know that promotion but but it also announces a whole lot of commerce to Stephenville as they go past her building okay thank you mr. Hines appreciate it thank you. Um, anybody else here wishes to speak in favor of this anybody wish to speak against all right we'll close the public hearing um, I, I guess we need a motion. Do we need a we need a motion to recommend changes to the city council? Yes, a uh, recommendation to move forward with the, the with uh, these the suggestions from the All right. development services. Committee. All right. So I need a motion. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the ordinance revisions as requested. Second. And that's a second. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I think 15% sounds good for off-premise signs. And uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to, to worry about the amount of words on a sign. Uh, it works for me. You know, I will say that Slim Pickens is actually the name of the business now. The Rexall Drug is, a, is the yeah. historic, it's yeah. a historic building. But um, yeah, I, I think the, the restriction on words is, is kind of unusual. Yeah. Um, but but I, I do think it's important to to maybe restrict off yeah off brand advertising yeah, yeah. okay off premise advertising yeah are we ready to vote all those in favor of recommending to council uh, approval of these alterations to our sign regulations relating to murals say aye aye those against all right you get your sign awesome
Okay, that's it. That's all we got on our uh, agenda. Well, it actually does have to go to city council. They're, they're the big bosses, so, so make your case there. Um, we, we just recommend. <laughs> thank you all for coming, and thank you for your little one for being so patient. <laughs> that's, that is boring stuff for a little one that size. Yeah. I'll move to adjourn. Motion to Second. All right. So adjourned.